Welcome Dark Players 1 and all today on Straight to the Point. I've bought another Unicorn Dartboard. I said I'd never do it again, but I did. I did it because these dartboards are actually £38 at the minute. But have I just wasted £38 or is this board actually pretty good? Let's find out. Okay, so before seeing the box, let's see what it's like inside. That is striking. And I do remember being shocked when I first looked in this box. It's perfect. There's no bleeding of the colours at all. The wires are perfectly spaced. No excess wiring outside of the playing area. It's perfect. It is stunning. I've never seen a dartboard without any bleeding at all. One thing that did stand out was the bullseye is very small and that wire is super thick in comparison to like a Blade 6. And the actual chamfer goes outwards, so it's more likely to go in the 25 if you hit it. Also, look how sunk down that bullseye is. So I should imagine I'm going to get a lot of bounce outs on that. We'll test that in the video. Another secret reason I bought this dartboard is because on the Blade 6, I really didn't like the numbering on the triple core, if you remember. And I bought this numbering for it, but it didn't fit. These boards are surprisingly chunky in comparison to the Blade 6. So the numbering didn't fit. It's been sitting there ever since. But it's going on this one. Even though I quite like the numbering that was on it, the numbers were quite flat and it was pretty good to look at. But this, to me, is the best looking numbering in the world. I love how thick the numbers are, but how much they stand out as well. And you've got the black wire that goes around the dart or really makes everything pop. I know it sounds cynical, it's just purely cosmetic, but it does look good. Now let's test this bullseye, because this is the thing I was most worried about. So I have hit that wire there, and it stayed in. So that's a good sign. And yeah, to be fair, it played all right. I was expecting to get a bounce out straight away. I actually got less bounce outs on this dartboard than I did on the standard Blid 6. And believe me when I say I did not think that was going to be the case. 225s there, but they're very closely knitted together, so that, that's going to be quite compressed. Very hard, that sizal. So there's more chance of it bouncing out. On the next three darts, I missed the ball completely, so I've skipped that one out and we've just gone to the next throw. Pointless putting it in. I'll be here all day. But yeah, it's playing lovely. I didn't get one bouncer going for the ball. On the scoring segment, there was a problem that a lot of the pros complained about, and that's when it hits the top wire, the dart kind of fall, falls down a little bit. That did happen, like by there. It's very annoying. And you can see now I'm having to hit those barrels and it's caused me to miss the 180. That was definitely going to be a 180 if that dart had sat upright. More often than not anyway. Now on the throw after it, it didn't happen. I just missed it slightly lower and it sat up perfectly. And I'm just going to fill that up all day when I'm warmed up. However, it does happen if you hit, hit it right at the top of the wire. It's really annoying. It is frustrating. The last positive with this dartboard is how quiet it is. Just listen to this now. Now this could be because I've got cardboard under the dartboard instead of using the windmill rotor lock system. But if you've got neighbours, that is very useful if you like practising late at night. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching Straight to the Point. Please remember to like and leave a comment. And as always, subscribe if you love the dots.